Hey guys, and welcome to my top 10 horrors I watched in 2014. Now this list is going to be of movies I watched in 2014, not horror movies that came out in 2014. This is like the year where I watched horrors. Now if you look at my channel, I've probably watched over 250 horrors this last year. Not this year, last year. So I got it down to 10. Now some of these I know pretty well. And some of them are quite new to me, which I really ended up like. These films will never be repeated in another list. Like, for instance, if I put something like, I don't know, Wishmaster in this list, it's not in the 2015 list because I would have done it in this list. So I'm not going to be watching it again for that. So here we go. So at number 10, we have Bloody Homecoming from 2012. Which involves kids that are going to a dance and they can't get in the dance. When they do go to the dance, it's very, very small. Yes, it's a low budget movie, probably a B movie, maybe C, depends on how you see it. Well, one of the boys tries to rape his girlfriend because he wants to get off with her and she fights back and the other people who are with him kind of lock him in a room. Well, that room ends up on fire and he ends up dying. So everyone dressed up as a firefighter goes around killing people. We have a silly conclusion and some really good kills for a low budget movie. I highly recommend Bloody Homecoming from 2012. Number 9. Shredder from 2003. Shredder's one of those films where they go to an ice skin lodge. And you got the you got the slatty girls, you got all kinds of people, you got the usual stereotypical people, you got the geeky nerdy bloke. You got the hunk, you got the guy who thinks he's another this person, you got the girls who are a bit slutty, and then you've got the one that's a little bit, how can I put it, misconcepted, they think she's a lesbian, you know, it's all that stuff. The usual kind of. But what makes this film so good is it's very 80s. In Shredder, there's a skier who hates snowboarders. Yes. There's a story behind it, and the person goes around killing and attacking, and some of the kills are pretty good. Like, someone gets caught up in the ski lift thing and gets stuck and ends up hanging there, which is really good. But the ending sells itself out a little bit, and in my view, it's a little bit silly because someone who you think is dead comes back. And I think that kind of ruins Shredder a little bit. But it's always been a, it's always, it'll always be a favourite of mine, and it'll always be a great movie to watch again and again and again. Number... Eight. The House on Sorority Row from 1982. Now, you got these sorority girls, and there's the head woman there, I can't remember her name, and she is a bit fussy with them because she wants the place on her own for some reason, and they all end up still being there because they want to have a party. Well, they end up killing her, and they end up trying to hide the body. Well, the body disappears. And people start getting knocked off one by one. Who's killing them? Is it her? Is it someone else? Well, we have a great story and one that really, really creeps you out. And one that actually ends with a pretty good cliffhanger. Sadly, they remade the film. And even though, do, even though I do like the remake, it's nowhere as good as the original. Number seven. Wishmaster from 1997. How can you not like this movie when it stars Andrew Divoff? Robert England and Tony Todd. And I think it stars Kane Hodder too. It's either this one or number two. I'm sure it's this one. Either way, it's got some of the great storytelling. So when a gin is released and he takes the form of Andrew Divoff, you just can tell when you look at Andrew Divoff, but he's got that look. He's got that gin inside him. That evil, that disgusting creature is inside him. And when people make wishes, like they want to be beautiful ever, and he makes them into a mannequin and stuff, it's just really, really good. It's got some really cheesy special effects, because that's when CGI was really coming into effect more. It's also just got a great story to it. I highly enjoy it. I think it's a great movie, and I'd recommend it to people. One of the greatest horror movies of the 90s, in my view. Number six. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. Now, I've seen this movie a few times, but never really watched it fully until I got the 4K remastered Blu-ray, which came up with so many special features. It was amazing. I was really happy by it. Really good. And it's one of those films where it doesn't need a lot of blood. It doesn't need... It just has that violence just by looking at the characters, just seeing what they do. 
but when Leatherface drops the person on the meat hook and leaves him there while they're dealing with the threat, that's so scary. And the character of Franklin is disabled, makes it just a little bit more real with the way he can't get through certain places. He can't do this. But there's this killer and his weird family. At the beginning when you meet the hitchhiker who tries to set him on fire and stuff, it's just really creepy from the outset. And it's an awesome movie. Tobe Hooper was awesome when he made this movie. Sadly, he'd go on to make things like The Fun House and Toolbox Murders. Not bad films, just not nowhere as good. Number five, Candyman from 1992. So in Tony Todd, he plays the Candyman. And if you say his name five times, he appears. And he kills you. Yep, he appears and he torments Helena. To a point where everybody thinks she's crazy. And with a great story and a back thing of why people are scared with images of him on the wall and all this other story. This is definitely a film to check out if you like a clever horror. Candyman isn't like Halloween. It's not like Friday the 13th. It's got a little bit more class to it, in my view. It's a lot more smart. From Clive Barker, who did Hellbound, who did Hellraiser and Book of Blood. This is by far one of his top creations that he created. Number four. With an early directed movie by Wes Craven, you know it's going to be good. And starring David Hess as Kruger, who is classified as probably one of the greatest villains in cinema history, in exploitive cinema, this has to be one of the greatest movies of all time. Now, when they, when they pick up the two girls and they kill them, and they end up going to the parents' house of one of the girls. Yep, that's right. The parents find out and things don't go as well as they planned. From somebody's genitalia being bitten off to somebody being caught with a chainsaw to all sorts of stuff. This is by far one of the greatest exploitive movies of all time. And also, it's got to be one of the greatest horror movies in my view at one time. Especially of this year that I watched. Number three, The Den. Now, The Den is about a girl who wants to, who's working on a project and she gets the money, she gets a grant for it. Now, this involves her going in a chat room called The Den, where you talk to people, where you basically click on the refresh button and you talk to a random person. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? Well, she's having a lot of fun with it, and the whole film is recorded in like a video camera kind of way. But she witnesses a murder. She tells the police, and the police tell her basically if it could have been a joke. Well, one by one, her friends start getting, the people close to her start getting picked off. And what I like about this movie is it's filmed from camera points of view. Even when she goes to talk to a detective at the scene of one of her friends missing, it's recorded from a camera inside a bag. When you find out what's happening at the end of the movie, it takes away slightly from it, but it's still as creepy as it was throughout the movie. I just expected a different ending to what we got. Now, it's number three on my list because I highly enjoyed it, and I bought it as soon as I watched it. And it was a great film. And it came 2013. Number two, Wolf Cop. Now, Wolf Cop is a silly horror comedy, and it's one of those ones you can't take seriously, but if you really love your horror comedy, a lot like American Werewolf in London, it's got a great amount of comedy in it. Wolf Cop basically is about a guy who is about a police officer who gets caught up and then one day wakes up and he feels different. And he goes around trying to solve what's happening, but at the same time he turns into the werewolf. The film even involves a sex scene with the werewolf and somebody dressed up as Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> and the wolf going, driving in the road down the car as the wolf with this great W on the car. It's a great movie. Highly recommend it. I've reviewed all of these movies, so make sure to check out my reviews of them. Number one, Prom Night from 1980. And again, Alex and Robin are walking down the street. They're twins. And she realises that Nick, Wendy, Kelly and the others are playing inside. So she wants to go and play with them. Alex doesn't want to, but she goes off and plays them. They play Killer is Coming. And she goes, and she ends up falling out the window because she's scared. 
fast forward years later, and there's prom night. People are going to the prom, they're getting ready for it. You get to meet the characters like Wendy, you get to know she's a bit bitchy. You get to meet Kelly, she's a bit submissive and a bit quiet. You get to meet Nick, you get to meet Nick who's become a popular boy, and he's got a love interest between Jamie Lee Curtis and Wendy. And it's a great film. Great film. And then there's a killer going around killing people on prom night. And the trailer really sells it pretty well. The killer is coming alone this year. And it's great. So there's a lot of Elsa Stein, Leslie Nelson, and a great villain in the name of Lou. It's your standard 80s movie. But it's got that 80s Canadian horror feel to it. When Canadian horror movies were really good. I don't know about you, but sadly, Canadian horror movies nowadays, they're just nowhere as good as they used to be. With great looking killer and a great story, Prom Night from 1980 is at number one spot on my list. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this list. If you'd like any more top tens, let me know, and I will do my best. So, thanks for watching, guys, and take care.